Hey everybody, we've gotten a lot of follow-up questions to some of the videos we've done in the past on uh, trademark law and brand protection in disc golf. Let's start with Simon and let's look at some interesting scenarios within disc golf as it relates to brand protection and trademark law. Simon Lazat has his primary logo. I was looking through our collection of discs. We have a, a Discraft Thrasher from the Ledgestone collection. That particular disc, to my view, to the way that I look at things, the stamp on the disc is potentially confusingly similar to Simon Lazat's logo. I'm not trying to be nitpicky here. I'm not trying to suggest that Discraft or Ledgestone did something inappropriate. The reason that this is so important for all businesses, and that includes disc golf companies and professional disc golfers, is if you have a new fan in the sport and she loves Simon Lazat and she wants to go out and buy Simon Lazat signature series disc or some type of merchandise stamped with Simon Lazat's logo, it could potentially be confusing to go into a disc golf store and see a disc with the logo stamp similar to what's on the Thrasher, that consumer might be confused into thinking, oh, that is the logo of the player that I love, the player that I'm a fan of. If you are Simon Lazat or you are Simon's sponsor, you want Simon's fans to go buy merchandise that helps Simon. It's not the objective of building brand loyalty around a logo to then have a fan go out intending to buy your products and because they're confused by the appearance of the logo, buying something else that doesn't help you or your manufacturer at all. Another example, uh, disc golf team here in the North Carolina and South Carolina area, Team Focus Disc Golf. And Team Focus Disc Golf has a logo. And I was very surprised once to go to a Disc Golf Pro Tour event and see one of the competitors wearing what I thought was a Team Focus logo. Um, it turns out it was not Team Focus at all, it was Tristan Tanner. And again, not trying to say Team Focus or Tristan Tanner are doing anything wrong. All I'm pointing out here is that when we get into these logos that are within the sport of disc golf, it is simple to look at one and look at the other. And if they are similar, you could be confused about what exactly does that logo stand for? Who is behind it? So that's what we try to avoid in trademark law is avoiding creating confusion in the marketplace. And I think some of these similar logos are doing that. There is another example from basketball that we could talk about. The dollars involved right now in disc golf are certainly far less than what they are in the NBA or even what they were 30 years ago in the NBA. Michael Jordan, uh, in the peak of his career, had a great run with Nike as his sponsor. Um, most people who were around back then, and even if you weren't, you're probably familiar with the Air Jordan tennis shoes and the Jumpman logo. Um, you know, both of those really strong brands made lots and lots of money for Michael Jordan and for Nike. Now, eventually, after Michael retired, Michael and Nike went their separate ways. Nike retained the rights to the Air Jordan brand and to the Jumpman logo. Now, obviously, Michael Jordan made a tremendous amount of money through his partnership with Nike, and perhaps it was a negotiated outcome with which all the parties were happy that Nike got to keep those trademarks for themselves going forward. And it's, uh, certainly can see why, because they still show up. The Jumpman logo still frequently shows up on team uniforms and other types of merchandise. So that logo is still making money for Nike in a big way. And perhaps Michael Jordan receives royalties for it. I don't know. I don't know anything about that deal. To bring it all around back to disc golf, many of you have probably seen Drew Gibson will frequently have the Michael Jordan slash Nike Jumpman logo appearing on his discs. And unless Drew has secured a sponsorship from Nike that he has not announced and that none of us know about, and if so, congrats, Drew. You know, that's a use of an invaluable Nike 
trademark in a way that could potentially be confusing. It could imply to consumers that Drew is sponsored by Nike. Um, and in the way that trademark owners protect their brands, um, it's likely something that Nike, Nike probably wouldn't be too crazy about. As of yet, the amount of dollars involved in disc golf and the amount of damages they might be entitled to through that type of use are so small, um, they just don't really make it onto the radar. It does bring me back to a point that I've made several times and I'll continue to make it again, which is we are waiting for the right scenario to arise where there will be some type of trademark or brand dispute within disc golf and it's avoidable. It doesn't have to be that way. We can certainly do some very basic trademark planning to put you on the right path and help you avoid those costly mistakes down the road of a trademark dispute. So I'd be curious to hear your thoughts on that. Are you aware of any logos out there in commerce that are confusingly similar? And if so, I'd love to hear about them in the comments.